the National Airsoft Festival 2022 is not too far away, so I thought it's about time I uploaded this footage from 2021. National Airsoft Festival is the largest airsoft game in Europe, although in 2021 the numbers were a little bit down at 2,000, although this year expecting normal numbers, currently expecting somewhere between three and 4,000 players. Although I was marshalling during 2021, I did try to record some footage as well, that's me you can see there putting up a camera on top of one of the buildings, although primarily I'm marshalling so filming came second and uh, you'll see that I didn't actually capture that much of what was going on, obviously it's a huge site, 175 acre site with multiple bases, multiple missions going off at the same time all around the site and I filmed what I could but as I say the priority is marshalling so uh, filming took second place but I still managed to capture some good footage and hopefully this will hype you up a bit for the National Airsoft Festival in 2022. Right, so the first thing we've got to do on Friday, we've got to chrono everyone's guns, and there's lots of guns to chrono. Some people have multiple guns, some people have trolleys full of guns, but while you're chronoing all the guns, you get to see some pretty good equipment and you get to meet some really interesting people. So this is first thing on Saturday morning, green team, Delta, they're overtaking the top of the fort here, getting control of it, ready for the next objective to be released. Marshall here, Marshall! And I just cut a shot from outside the fort there. Uh, one thing about marshalling at the weekend is you do get shot a little bit, and as I'm trying to record it, I'm standing in awkward places and I'm getting shot even more. Right, we got what we got here is one of the green team handing in a objective spread out across the map are drugs packages, which if you find them and collect them and bring them back to your base, you can get points for that. Uh, looks like someone's opened this bag to see what's in there, but I can assure you we do not use real coke for game props at Ground Zero, that would be really expensive. Right, this is a bit later on the Saturday, we've moved on to a base called the Eagle's Nest, this two-story wooden building. Green team are trying to clear it. This was actually built by marshals in the uh, off-season during the Covid pandemic when no one was playing. <laughs> this guy's getting shot to hell, there's so many people outside the building shooting it right now, they can't actually tell that he's dead. Best thing to do is just power through. Doing what I can to help him get out there without being shot, but like I say, there's people in the bushes all around us just checking out this base, trying to get in there. I'm going to go and have a look upstairs and see what we got up here. A couple of blue team others, their team's called the others, a couple of blue team members up here. Green have been trying to clear them out for a while, they haven't managed to do it yet. Across. Anyway, green team going for it now, they're getting aggressive, using the pistols to try and clear out the enemies through the small hole there, which is the only way you can get up there. Well, it looks like the green have managed to take them out. Unlucky blues, good work there. Good job, Delta. Delta clear. But they've done quite a good job, and there we go. They've cleared the eagle's nest, ready for the objective to be collected. Oh, nice gun. Beautiful, isn't she? Mm. Right, I've moved on to the village now. Blue team being blue team in control of the village, waiting for an objective here. I've never seen that front end kit before. It's because it's a custom. And yeah, as I was saying, you get some get to see some pretty interesting gear, all sorts of equipment, loadouts, and guns at the weekender. <laughs> Good work, Dawa. You got this under control. Sorry. Good work, others. You got this under control. <laughs> so yeah, accidentally geeing up the wrong team there. They didn't seem too happy about that. But the others, blue team, they've secured this objective, crate of gold, and they're taking it off to score the points for it. Just hanging around for any stragglers before I move on to the next base. And of course the marshals are keeping each other on their toes by throwing firecrackers at each other. 
Right, anyway, that's the end of the first day. It's time to get some food. There's quite a lot of decent food places at the uh, Airsoft Festival. My recommendation would be the Greek Kebabs. Alright, we're on to the Saturday night a night game now. And as a marshal, you really, really get shot to hell during these night games. Marshal here! Marshals! Marshals under the red light! Marshals under the red light! They're pretty chaotic, pretty hectic. Extremely difficult to marshal these night games, obviously. There's people with night vision, people with torches. I'm not sure if any of the marshals have got night vision or not. I suspect at least some of them do. And also, it's very difficult to film the night games as well. I've still got my camera set for daytime. Like I say, I've got minimal time, so didn't actually mess around with setting my cameras for nighttime. I'm not really used to filming in the dark. So, let's move on to the Sunday, the next day. I'm not sure about the sort of party you're looking for, guys, or wouldn't they? Yeah, you get to see some pretty unusual loadouts. Uh, the Bravo team commander was wearing a bright orange tutu the whole weekend. Well, I can tell you where the next objective is if you want. Uh, that'd be wonderful, thank you, Marcus. As you can tell, there's not much storage space in this. I've got it, put my arm up and hit me in the arm bit right here. Ouch. <laughs> Right, we're on to upstairs of the fort on the second day, and others are in control of the fort at the moment, waiting for an objective to be released up here. Done pretty well securing the area so far. Easy, easy. Now that looked a little bit aggressive, so let's have a look at that in slow motion. I'm pretty happy that no one's blind firing each other. And that blue team guy is a little bit like he's sticking the gun in the dude's face there, but you kind of, with a big gun like that, it's kind of how you have to use it in that situation, really. And uh, yeah, the guy that got shot, he didn't seem too unhappy about it or anything. He was actually apologising to me and my mate down there as we're the only ones he managed to shoot. He didn't actually manage to shoot any blue team members, but still, good effort by him. Don't see too many other non-blue team trying that move right now. Yeah, he managed to sneak up to those stairs and that was it, that was as far as we got. <laughs> Give them the credit for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, this is towards the end of the day on Sunday, on the last day, and most people are fighting over the village. It's not the only objective going on right now, but uh, it's most certainly the busiest. <laughs> got shot a lot today. <laughs> Unlucky bars, well taken. Marshal here! But again, get shot quite a lot at this point. And there's definitely some Bravo, some orange team trying to come in and take the space off the others who've got it fairly well secured at the moment. And yeah, getting hit from more stray BBs once again, trying to wave my Marshal jacket around to show I'm a Marshal. But yeah, despite my best efforts, I'm getting shot to crap. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm trying to get it on camera as well. <laughs> Just stand in the stupid places. As I was saying, there's lots of players around us. Most of them are in the bushes surrounding the base. That's actually where you can control the base from, inside the bushes. However, the objective itself is the huts. You have to get as many people in the huts as possible, so people do need to be in these huts as well as the bushes. And uh, you can see from mate Dan is filming it, it's filming partially at the same time with his camera phone there. You can see on his side there's definitely a lot of Bravos. I'm actually going to move over there now myself. You can see Dan kneeling down in the corner there. And you can see all these Bravos, all the orange team, so there's actually quite a lot of them here holding this part, holding this side of the base. Oh mate, good effort. <laughs> this guy comes through and knife kills a couple of people with his medieval sword. The rules say he's supposed to actually tap people on the shoulder. He shouldn't really be doing such an aggressive stabbing motion like that, but everyone seems reasonably happy with what happened there, so I'll let that go for now. And although the ghillie suit guy stabbed him, he actually uh, took a hit before that. Ah, but yeah, I got shot again. That one actually hurt quite a lot as well. There's one of the orange team leaders coming in now. Not the main team leader, not the 2-2 guy, he's still out there somewhere. But these orange team, the Bravo, they're called, they've moved up a bit from where they were to start. They've definitely got themselves in the entrance and they're pushing blue team back. They've got some of the huts, but blue team's still in control of the village overall at the moment. 
Bravo had not given up. They're trying all the way. They've got a steady flow of uh, players coming back in from the dead zones and they're all going straight in to try and take the village. Starting to run out of time, only a few minutes left. Keep pushing guys, keep pushing! And that's it, that's the end of the game. Bravo definitely tried really hard, but it looks like the others got it in the end. And in fact, the others, the blue team, they won overall in 2021. Quite convincingly, actually, it was a very good effort from that team. Just trying to let everyone know that the game's over and they need to stop shooting each other now. And also trying to tell everyone to stay in the huts that they're in, because we need to count how many people are in the huts, what team uh, controls what hut. But anyway, that's pretty much all the uh, usable footage that I managed to capture. I'm going to try and capture some more footage in 2022, see if I can get a bit more. But you can see the orange team leader just coming in there in his 2-2, uh, although he's actually surrounded himself with a bright orange flag as well, so you can't see his 2-2 too, too, too well. But anyway, I hope you found that entertaining. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Take it easy.